Hey everyone, it's Sebastian here. Today we're going to be going over the different kinds of temperaments and how you may want to adjust your parenting habits um, depending on which category your child belongs to. So temperament was first introduced as a psychological concept by these two individuals right here. So namely Stella Chess and Alexander Thomas. So what we have here is these nine characteristics uh, proposed by Thomas and Chess themselves. And some of you might count eight, but it's actually because they have distractibility and attention span in the same category here. So the first one would be rhythmicity. So it's just basically uh, the regularity of eating, sleeping, toileting, as you have here. So basic needs, uh, how often do these things occur? And activity levels, so just the sheer amount of degree of energy movement. So, you know, some kids uh, might obviously be more active than others. You see them uh, you can point them out quite easily. And approach withdrawal. So as it says here, it's just the ease of approaching people in situations, uh, meaning when the child is presented with something new, such as could be a person here, and they, they don't have any uh, difficulties with that necessarily. So, or they could, you know, there's both sides of the spectrum. Uh, adaptability. So ease of tolerating change in routine plan. So once again, we have a sense of uh, something new here, how well do they adapt to that is what we're trying to know. And sensory threshold, so amount of stimulation required for responding. Um, basically, how, how much stimuli is needed in order for the child to respond or in order to make it aversive, um, something of, of that sort would be, uh, is what we're looking for here. And Predominant quality of mood. So this is actually something that's really hard to assess, especially for children that are younger. Um, for this video, we're actually going to be addressing uh, children from the age of zero to 12. But uh, as you get younger in age, uh, if you look at younger age cohorts, it's, a, it's much harder to address because it's just so transient. It changes all the time. Their mood is never quite the same. And intensity of mood expression, so degree of effect with uh, when pleased, displeased, happy, sad. So to what extremes does it go to, basically? Uh, and here we have distractibility, attention span, persistence, so ease of being distracted. So as we saw in the video um, with uh, Dr. Vanier that she shared, we had the example with the plant. So as soon as uh, in the study, the children were presented with the plant, some were more easily distracted than others. So some were completely distracted. They couldn't pay attention on anything else but the plant. And um, that's basically what just completely dis destabilized them, in other words. So this is what we have here, these nine um, characteristics. And uh, this is what they use to assess uh, temperament, which will actually fall into three different categories, which we're going to talk about right about now. So going off of the nine characteristics we just saw, uh, we're able to uh, determine what kind of temperament your child might have. So Thomas and Chess, they actually broke it down into three different categories. So the first one being the easy babies, which are 40% of infants, and the difficult babies, which actually accounts for 10% uh, of the infants in their study, and the slow to warm up babies, which are 15% of children uh, from their sample. So in this case, we can see that the characteristics here or the description they it goes off exactly from what we saw in the nine um characteristics that we observed just earlier so the easy babies well they adjust easily to new situations quickly establish routines and are generally cheerful and easy to calm so as you can see here they adjust easily to new situations let's say you um they scored high on adaptability well that means that it would be a easy baby uh, characteristic, something you'd see within this category. And uh, furthermore, we have the difficult babies. Well, they're slow to adjust to new experiences. So just the opposite of uh, the easy babies. They uh, are likely to react negatively and intensely to stimuli and events. So in this case, once again, it derives exactly from this chart that we just saw. And these slow to warm-up babies, uh, they are somewhat difficult at first, but become easier over time. So, and this is especially true if the parents follow uh, the term uh, goodness of fit. So if they fall within those uh, expectations, they should especially become easier over time. So we're gonna look at that right about now. So what we have here is just a small slideshow uh, that I did that displays all the different temperaments uh, that we've seen as of yet. 
And uh, just a few uh, characteristics. In fact, I just copied the same characteristics uh, to set it here as a reminder. And um, what most parents can say uh, about difficult babies that is that uh, they're a lot more to handle. Uh, as you can see in the documentary uh, from week eight, uh, Jack was definitely a lot to handle. And, uh, you know, his reactions to stimuli were much more intense uh, than the other babies. And um, basically, if you'd be following the goodness of fit principle, the parents would have to be especially uh, very understanding, nourishing, uh, so on because he's a difficult baby. So furthermore, uh, slow to warm up babies uh, can be a little bit difficult at first. So you can see uh, the characteristics that we may find uh, in, within the difficult babies. But if the parents can follow the um, goodness of fit and they can stay up to standards, basically, if they provide enough nourishment and uh, they're understanding enough, they can eventually uh, develop into much easier uh, babies. So as it says here, it can be somewhat difficult at first, but becomes easier over time um, if uh, we provide the right care. So last but not least, uh, the easy babies are often said to be much easier, well, as it says in the title here, uh, than the other uh, two, the two other temperaments. And um, that's simply because they, uh, they're quite easygoing. Uh, they're happy-go-lucky, as some might say. And um, they adjust quite easily to new situations and whatnot. So these are the things that you might expect from these different temperaments. So the last point I'd like to make here is that it's relatively easy to um, determine what category that your child may belong to when it comes to temperament. Um, however, there's a lot more to it than that. Uh, as an example, children with easy uh, temperament um, characteristics might find themselves to be more active than other children that fall within the same category. So uh, that child ideally would have an environment that um, promotes this. So if you have an active child, well, you might want to um, allow them to participate in sports, uh, make, you know, small obstacle courses, actually. Uh, we have uh, examples here. So uh, this can be ideal, well, depending on the age, of course, and their skill set. But they could go through these obstacle courses, which allows them to be more active and uh, do the things that they really like to engage in compared to other children who actually uh, aren't quite as active and would rather uh, read a book or something of that sort. So ideally, you want them, you want to create an environment that will um, promote the children to do what they, they like to do. So the main idea of this video is to not only observe what your child is good at, but to create an environment that allows them to thrive at whatever this might be. So going off the previous example, uh, if your child is especially active, well, you might want to involve them in sports teams, create an obstacle course for them and whatnot. So thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, if you found it informative, please leave a like and you may comment on anything you might want to hear in the future. And with that being said, I will see you guys very soon.